Hello, welcome back. I'm Sergio. I'm your teacher, and today we're going to have the second class related to relative pronouns and relative clauses. The last video was related to defining relative clauses, and this video today is about non-defining relative clauses. Let's see what we are going to do. Good. What's the objective of this video? What are we going to do in this lesson? What are you going to learn? First, we're going to review the uses of the relative pronouns that, who, whose, which, where, and when. We did some exercises related to those relative pronouns um, with the PDF file from the Cambridge book. And B, what is the second thing we're going to do? We're going to review what are non-defining relative clauses, which is the main objective of this video, of this lesson. The relative pronouns that I told you we were going to learn for this class are that, who, whose, which, where, and when. Remember that we use which and that for things in defining relative clauses. We use who to introduce a relative clause in which we're talking about people. We have already seen a lot of examples related to who. We use where for places to introduce a relative clause in which we talk about a place. We use when to introduce a relative clause in which we talk or in which we say the time that something happened. And we use whose to introduce a relative clause in which we have a possessive adjective. We use the relative pronoun whose to replace a possessive adjective. For example, his, her, or their. We're going to see some examples of the use of which, who, where, when, whose, and that. Let's start with the examples. Which and that we use it for things in defining relative clauses. So let's see one example. We bought a house which, or that is 200 years old. Remember, we can separate that sentence into two clauses, the main clause and the relative clause. So the main clause would be, we bought a house. And the second clause is, the house is 200 years old. We use which to replace the house in the relative clause. Let's see an example for who. I met a woman who lives next door. We use who to replace a woman in the relative clause. Let's separate them and see what happens. I met a woman. That is the first clause. A woman lives next door is the second clause. We use where for places. Let's see an example for where. The town where I live has many parks. We use where to introduce the relative clause in which we have a place. What happens if we separate this sentence into two different clauses? I live in a town and the town has many parks. I use where to replace the town in the relative clause. Let's see an example with when. I remember the day when we met. Let's separate this sentence into two clauses and see what happens. I remember the day. We met one day. So we use when to replace the day in the relative clause. But see, this is a relative clause defining relative clause of the second type because in this case the relative pronoun is optional. I remember the day we met. We use whose to replace a possessive adjective. For example, his or her or they. Let's see one example. We met a woman whose umbrella was broken. So, what happens if we separate this sentence into two different clauses? We met a woman. Her umbrella was broken is the second clause. So, in this case, we have a possessive adjective, which is her. So, we use 
the relative pronoun whose to replace the possessive adjective in the relative clause. Let's see another example. I talked to a lady whose daughter is a doctor. What happens if we separate this sentence into two different clauses? The first one. I talked to a lady. And the second clause is Her daughter is a doctor. In this relative clause, we have a possessive adjective. Her is the possessive adjective. Her daughter is a doctor is the second clause. And in the relative clause, we use whose to replace her daughter. Now, let's go to the second part of this lesson. We're going to recap. Let's recap the difference between defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. We had that on our previous video, and I told you that a refining relative clause tells which now we're talking about. We talked about how essential the information in the relative clause is for the sentence. In the case of I met a woman who lives next door, the relative clause who lives next door gives us essential information about the woman we're talking about. We need the relative clause to know exactly which woman we're talking about. A non-defining relative clause gives us extra information about a noun in a sentence. We don't need this information to understand a sentence. So let's see the example. I live in London, which has some fantastic parks. The information in the relative clause, which has some fantastic parks, is extra information. It's not essential. I don't need to know that London has some fantastic parks to know exactly where I live or what London is. So remember, the information in defining relative clauses is necessary and the information in non-defining relative clauses is extra information. Some characteristics of non-defining relative clauses. In non-defining relative clauses, we don't use that. In defining relative clauses, you can use who or that for people, and you can use which or that for things, but that doesn't happen in non-defining relative clauses. In non-defining relative clauses, we only use which or who, but we do not use that. We use which if the pronoun refers to a thing and who if, the, if it refers to a person. In non-defining relative clauses, we can't drop the relative pronoun. And remember, the information in non-defining relative clauses is extra information. There are two types of non-defining relative clauses. The first type of defining relative clauses are when the clause, the relative clause, comes after the subject of the sentence. So let's see the first example. My boss, comma, who is very nice, comma, lives in Manchester. Here, which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is who, and the relative clause is who is very nice. Let's see what happens when we separate this sentence into two different clauses. My boss lives in Manchester is the first clause, and my boss is very nice is sec the second clause. In this case, my boss is very nice is extra information and is related to the subject of the sentence. My boss, who is very nice, lives in Manchester. In this case, in non-defining relative clauses, the relative clause goes between two commas in the middle of the sentence. Let's see the next example. My sister, comma, who I live with, comma, knows a lot about cars. What happens if we separate them? My sister knows a lot about cars is the first clause. And I live with my sister is the second clause. I use the relative pronoun who to replace 
my sister and I place the relative clause in the middle of the sentence because the relative pronoun who refers to the subject of the sentence. Let's see the next example. My bicycle, which I've had for more than 10 years, is falling apart. We have two different clauses for this sentence. My bicycle is falling apart is the first clause. And I've had my bicycle for 10 years. In this case, that I've had my bicycle for 10 years is extra information. So we locate the extra information between commas after the subject of the sentence, which is the relative pronoun, which I've had for more than 10 years is the relative clause, and the relative clause refers to the subject of the sentence, so we use the relative clause in the middle of the sentence between commas. Let's see the next sentence. The National Museum, where you can find a Picasso, is not open on Mondays. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is where. And which one is the relative clause? Where you find a Picasso. We use the relative pronoun where to refer to the subject of the sentence, which is the National Museum. And what happens if we separate this sentence into two different clauses? Well, this happens. The National Museum is not open on Mondays. And the second clause is, you can find a Picasso in the National Museum. You can find a Picasso in the National Museum is extra information. Now, let's see examples of the second type of relative clauses of non-defining relative clauses. The first one, and remember, the second type of non-defining relative clauses is when the relative clause comes after the object of the verb. Next week, I'm going to Manchester. Juan lives in Manchester. We use the relative pronoun where to replace Manchester and the relative pronoun where refers to Manchester, which is the object of the main clause, of the first clause. Let's go with the second example. Yesterday, I called a friend, Julie, who lives in New York. The relative pronoun we use is who, and the relative clause is who lives in New York. In this case, who lives in New York refers to the object of the first clause. I call Julie. Let's see what happens if we separate this into two different clauses. Yesterday, I called her friend Julie, who li Julie lives in New York. And remember, Julie lives in New York. It's extra information. I don't need to know that Julie lives in New York to know that I called her. Let's see the next example. I really love the new Chinese restaurant, which was founded by Jin Higgs Ping in 1982. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is which, and the relative clause is which was founded by Jean Higgs Ping in 1982. Which is the subject of the relative clause, and it refers to the object of the first clause. We use which to replace the Chinese restaurant. Let's see what happens if we separate this sentence into two different clauses. I really love the new Chinese restaurant. The Chinese restaurant was founded by Jin Higgs Ping in 1982. The fact that the Chinese restaurant was founded by Jin Higgs Ping in 1982 is extra information and I don't need it to know that I love the new Chinese restaurant. Let's go with the next example. Jane is married to a nice man, whose mother is an artist. Whose is the relative pronoun? Whose mother is an artist is the relative clause. What happens if we separate this sentence into two different sentences? 
Jane is married to a nice man. His mother is an artist. His mother means the mother of the man. So in this case, we have a possessive adjective, which is his, and we use whose to replace his mother in the relative clause. Remember, his mother, the mother of the man is an artist, is extra information, and I don't need to know that to know that Jane is married to a nice man. So in this case, this is extra information. Keep this in mind. Another difference between defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses is the use of commas. In defining relative clauses, we don't use commas because the information is essential. Let's see the examples. I'm looking for the secretary who can use a computer well. I'm not looking for just any secretary. I'm looking for a secretary who can use a computer well. The man that phone is my brother. If I don't say that phone is my brother, I can be talking about any man. The camera, which costs a hundred pounds, is over there. The information in the relative clause, which costs a hundred pounds, is essential because I could be talking about any camera. The house where I live belongs to Julie. The information in the relative clause is essential because the house belongs to Julie. Could be any house, but I'm talking about exactly the house where I live. But remember, in non-defining relative clauses, we use commas because the information is extra. And remember that in non-defining relative clauses, we don't use that. Next week, I'm going to Montreal, comma, where Juan lives. The relative clause refers to the object of the sentence. I use the relative clause at the end of the sentence after a comma. My boss, who is very nice, lives in Manchester. Who is very nice is the relative clause. And the relative pronoun who is referring to the subject of the sentence. That's why we use the relative clause between commas in the middle of the sentence. My sister, who I live with, knows a lot about, about cars. So, who I live with is referring to my sister, which is the subject of the sentence, and that's why I located after the subject. My bicycle, which I've had for more than 10 years, is falling apart. It's a very old bicycle. So, the relative clause, which I've had for more than 10 years, is referring to the subject of the sentence. And that's why I located between commas in the middle of the sentence. My mother's house, which I grew up in, is very small. Which I grew up in is the, is the relative clause, and it refers to the subject of the sentence. That's why I locate the relative clause in the middle of the sentence between commas. Yesterday, I called our friend Julie, who lives in New York. Who lives in New York is the relative clause that is extra information and is referring to the object of the sentence. That's why I locate it at the end of the sentence after a comma. I really love the new Chinese restaurant, which was founded by Jin Hixping in 1982. Which was founded by Jin Hixping in 1982 is the relative clause, and it refers to the new Chinese restaurant, which is the object of the verb in the main clause, in the first clause. And that's why I locate the relative clause after a comma at the end of the sentence. So, that's it from me. That is the end of the topic of relative clauses, non-defining relative clauses, and defining relative clauses. As usual, let me know if you have some questions, if there is something you don't understand, or if there is something you want to know. I'll see you in class, and remember that later we'll continue with the exercises. Enjoy your afternoon, and bye-bye.